Finally, in this intervals chapter, we're going to learn about inversions. If you invert something, what are you doing? Well, if I took this glass and I inverted it, I wrote a C here at the bottom and an F here at the top. If I invert it, I'm really just flipping it upside down. So my C that was on the bottom is now on the top and my F's on the bottom. It works the exact same way when we're looking at the staff. So really inversions are just flipping the notes, we're flipping the interval upside down. So if we had that C to that F, which I just did right there, we're taking the C that's on the bottom and we're moving it up the octave. Now we're not just sticking it anywhere, we're moving it from a C to a C. Now you'll notice that C to F, this was a perfect fourth, all right? But when I take and I stick that C up on the top, is this right here a fourth anymore? It's not. The fourth has now turned into a perfect fifth. They are the same pitches, but they sound differently. And actually, every single perfect fourth is gonna always invert to a perfect fifth. And there's a chart in your book that shows you all of the other inversions, how that they always work. I promise it works this way. You can stay up all night testing out this theory, but this is the way it works. So here's the way that it works as far as inversions go. First, let's just talk about the numeric intervals as far as what the generic interval inverts to. Seconds always invert to a seventh. Thirds always invert to a sixth. Fourth always inverts to a fifth. And then octaves and unisons, you can sort of say that they invert, but really, really if it's a unison, you're just kind of taking it and you're sticking it up. But basically, for the most part, you're talking about these intervals right here. So for instance, a second, we had an E and an F. If I took that E and I stuck it up to the top, we went from a second to a seventh. A third to a sixth. If I have F and A, if I take that F and I stick it up to the top, we now have a sixth, and I already showed you fourths and fifths. And this works the reverse way as well. So a seventh always inverts to a second, sixth always inverts to a third, fifth always inverts to a fourth. So that's numeric inversions. And now the qualities always invert in a specific way as well. Major always goes to minor and vice versa. And augmented always goes to diminished and vice versa. Perfects stay perfect. So a perfect fourth becomes a perfect fifth. And likewise, the opposite works as the same way. So let's do a couple inversions right now together and one of your discussion questions asks you to give an example of an inversion. Try to use a different one than one that I do here on the video and think about your own. So let's just do what would be the inversion of a minor third. Well, remember, we said minor went to what? Rewind. Minor went to major and a third went to what? A third went to a sixth. And let's just test that out and see if that's right. So let's do from good old C to E. Actually though, that's not minor though, is it? C to E flat would be my minor third. And if I now take that C and I stick it up top, do I have a major sixth from E flat to C? I do. And that's just one example. Again, you can test out that theory forever, but I promise that's the way it works. Let's do a couple more together. Let's do a major second. What would a major second go to? Major would become minor. Second would become a seventh. What would a perfect fourth go to? We already did that on the board. Perfect fourth would go to a perfect fifth. How about what would an augmented fourth go to? Remember, augmented goes to or inverts to diminished. Fourth always inverts to a fifth. So an augmented fourth inverts to a diminished fifth. Now some of you are probably thinking, why do we even need to know this? And one reason why we need to know this is because this knowledge helps us when we're building descending intervals. Some of your homework might ask you at some point to build an interval going down. That means if we're going from, say, A is my starting note, and 
we're being told to build a perfect fourth going down, meaning this is the top note. Whoa. Okay, now when you're doing it this way, since you don't have that bottom note, you can't really think about the key that easily. I mean, sometimes people can kind of figure it out, but remember the bottom note of an interval is when we think about it as far as keys go. Now, if you need to build a perfect fourth going down, one of the easiest ways to do it is to either look at that half step chart that's in your book that I showed you in the end of the last video. So you can just count half steps going down. But remember, when you count half steps going down, you've got to preserve that generic interval. So if we're building a perfect fourth down, let's make sure we have our generic right. One, two, three, four. And then you need to make sure whatever flat or sharp or nothing is on there to make that accurate. So get your generic on there first. But remember, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 whole. That looks crazy. You can do it this way, but just remember, you're counting down backwards. So you're not counting up, you're counting from the A, and you're then going down a half step, a whole step, and a whole step. So that's one way to do it. But another really easy way to do it is to just compute the inversion. Okay, so if we need a perfect fourth going down, the inversion of a perfect fourth would be a perfect fifth. So we can build a perfect fifth going up, and a perfect fifth going up would be A, C, E, and I'll tell you right now, there's no flat or no sharp on there, but you can go ahead and figure that out using your knowledge from the last videos and last week's homework. A perfect fourth going up is gonna be, a perfect fifth going up, sorry, is gonna be this E right here, and then since we already know that the, inver the inversion is gonna be the perfect fourth that was our original question. All that you then have to do, because we were originally, remember, looking for a perfect fourth going down. So the perfect fifth up and perfect fourth down, it's the same answer. So you can just take that perfect fifth from up here, take that F, I mean, sorry, take that E, and just stick it right down there. It's probably going to be easier for you to figure it out using just the half steps and counting down, counting backwards, but just remember to count backwards. But rewind and look into that inversion thing I just showed you, because actually it's super easy for those descending intervals. So when it's a descending interval, and there's instructions in your book as well, instead of having to think about trying to figure out what that starting note is or what that key is, since you can't really start on that keynote to do it the key signature way, you can now, if you're building the inversion, you can think about that note because you're building it going the opposite way. Let's do one more because this can be kind of confusing at first. And let's do it from, let's do it from E flat. And we, I'm going to tell you that we need to build a, actually let's start from the top E flat because that'll be easier to see. We need to build a major sixth going down. All right, if you need to build a major sixth going down, first of all, that's a lot of half and whole steps to count and it can lead to errors. And the inversion of a major sixth is pretty easy. The inversion of a major sixth, let's remember, is a minor third. So if you're building a minor third going up when you build the inversion, you now can use that E flat as your keynote, which is the cool thing. So from E flat, let's build a minor third going up and remember first, let's just stick that third up there from E flat to G. Oh, that would be major. So to make it minor, I got to put a G flat on there. Now though, that's not the answer because that is the minor third going up. We really needed the major sixth going down. So all that you have to do is take that G flat right there and bring it down and put it down here, and you now have your original question, which was the major sixth going down. So those of you going on to theory, you might wanna really try to understand this method. Everybody else who's just trying to kinda of get through week by week and understand the material, if you're counting a descending interval, just remember to count backwards, use that half and a whole step pattern and count down to figure out those descending intervals.